We're continuing our coverage at the Minds and Money Conference, and with me now is David Morgan, publisher of the Morgan Report, ready to talk about this precious metals and mining landscape. David, good to have you back on the on the program. Thanks for having me. Now I know you cover it all, but let's talk about silver. I know that's a metal dear and, and, and close to your heart. Up over 40% this year, so no longer just riding the coattails of gold here, almost stealing the show from the yellow metal at times. What do you make of the rally here? Well, I was asked to do a presentation here, as you know, Daniela, and it was about why is silver outperforming gold. Silver's a smaller market, and we're in the bull phase of the market. Silver will outperform the upside and the downside. So silver was a little bit of a laggard at the beginning of the year. In fact, I'd done a couple of interviews where I spoke. I was a little concerned that gold was leading the way because if we'd really turned, silver would lead. Well, silver did what it normally does, surprises everybody, including yours truly, but took off ahead of gold. Now, the silver companies outperforming the actual metal. So where should an investor's focus be? Do you think they should be looking at physical silver or the miners? Both. I mean, I'll be consistent here. As long as you have a portfolio to get dedicated to real metal first, and that's bought and paid for with no margin, then you go in, you really want to go in the miners because the leverage factor is so strong right. that you can get easily a three to one return. How would you play out the rest of the year as an investor in precious metals? Well, I would... As ahead be, of the supposed Fed rate hike, right. how would I, you position yourself? I'd hold what I have. I wouldn't add to positions unless it's on extreme weakness and I wait for the market to tell me. We're in a sideways or indecision pattern right now. If we break to the upside, you want to you know, add. Or if we're going to go to the downside, you're just going to have to wait and see what the bottom looks like. I think we could just go sideways until after the election. And then depending on what the Fed does, I think an interest rate and the reality won't have much effect longer term. On a short term, it could go either way. Where do you see silver in six months as a price forecast? Now, I see by the end of the year, silver's probably going to be around 22. I don't see it's going to be a whole lot higher than it's been already. Uh, gold, probably equal percentage. Okay. up, but I don't think we're going to get to the breakout levels that I see of 26 silver and 1550 gold until 2017. We're at the conference here and one of the keynote speakers was Robert Friedland who was really pumping up copper, platinum, um, some other speakers here really saying the way of the future is lithium. What do you think of, of, this, uh, of these metals here? Well, I am not as enthusiastic about the commodity cycle as I was back in 2000. China was the main driver, and because they were, we saw so many base metal mines, and 70% of silver comes out of a base metal mine, that uh, that's gone away. I think the contraction continues throughout the sector. If you look at the Baltic Dry Index and what's really going on in the real world, yeah. I am not that bullish on copper. I'm not that bullish on most of the base metals. I'm somewhat bullish on the zinc situation because some of the bigger mines have been closing. But I think that we have to really rebuild uh, into the commodity cycle, and I don't think we're there yet. I'm not that uh, strong on anything but the precious metals, and I'm pretty, pretty bullish on the energy sector once that this huge debt situation gets resolved one way or the other through the fracking industry. So I think the safest place to be for right now is in the metals. And platinum, I'll comment briefly, it's undervalued relative to gold, but it isn't considered money like silver and gold are. Uh, but later in the cycle, you probably be able to take a platinum coin and exchange it for, you know, one and a half gold so, coins. So something. you're not jumping on this electric car bandwagon where everyone's like, we're going to need lithium or we're going to need... No. No, I'm not. I think that uh, there needs to be more research on the battery industry, and I'm certainly not an expert there. I haven't done enough research, but there has been some projections early on when uh, Warren Buffett bought in the silver market so heavily about silver being used in the battery space. And I looked at it briefly and I haven't done it in a while. I need to do that. But I think there's an opportunity probably for silver in the battery space that actually could, I'm saying could, not would, because I don't know yet, have a significant influence. So I have to wait and see. So and some might be right. And about finally, it. David, you've been keeping very busy. Besides the Morgan Report, now you're the CEO of a new uh, royalty company. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, Lithium Royalties was started at the end of last year. I teamed together with Abraham Drost of Sabina Silver, and he's also done premier royalties that he sold at a premium and made investors a fair amount of money. And we've teamed up to start a small, if you will, silver wheat in the Franco Nevada. Okay. I'm saying emphasizing we're small. We're going in a niche market. A lot of these guys are friends of mine that have up and coming mines or they're in production and need to expand their mill. And they're looking for one, two, three million dollars kind of thing. And we have the opportunity to work with them to help them move their projects forward or enhance them. So 
I'm very excited about it. More work than, well, I knew it would be a lot of work, a little more than I anticipated, but it's all good. Best of luck with that, David. And uh, thanks for watching our coverage here from the Minds and Money Conference. We'll have more for you on Kitco.com. Thanks so much, David.